Greetings and salutations, Charlton66 here once again with another video. Um, as always, I hope everyone is doing well and uh, everyone's enjoying their summer. Uh, it's already July almost, so the summer's really uh, taking a full swing and I hope everyone's getting things done they wanted to get done. Um, for me, the summer, I just wish the summer would get over with because Baltimore is not until October. And after hearing or seeing and reading the comments for Heroes Con, watching the videos, it makes my mouth water waiting for the big con, um, which is for me, Baltimore. Um, that's a, I go to little cons throughout the area, but the big con is what I, you know, is the, uh, is the epitome for me of conventions, Baltimore. Um, I look forward to that show and I can't wait. Or to start, but I digress. Like I said, summer, I just wish to get over with so I could, you know, uh, get to October so uh, so I can head on into Baltimore and uh, go to that show. Um, again, like I said, I hope everyone's doing well. I've been enjoying the videos that I've been watching, and I've been watching as much as I possibly can, leaving comments and whatnot, and uh, a lot of good contests are going on, a lot of good contests. I just don't have the time. Um, it's been a while since I did a video, I really hurt my back, so I wasn't able to, you know, um, sit here and make a video without wincing in pain and getting comic books out and everything else. I just, just couldn't do it. I even missed the show that RAG718 talked about, the one here locally. I uh, missed out on that, couldn't go because of, of, of my back. Um, it was a good show from what I understand, but anyway. Um... Going to do a few things. Got some, uh, so of course, some Charlton, a couple of short lived um, Charlton runs, um, and, a, a, and a figure, an action figure that I picked up. But they call it a soft statue, which is kind of a cool way of putting I've never heard that phrase before. Maybe someone else has. I haven't. So, um, one of the first series I'm going to talk about, um, it ran. Five original issues, but it had six with the modern reprint. I don't have the modern reprint um, since it came much later. It's harder to find in, in a decent shape. Um, this Vengeance Squad I has run I have is in really high grade, and I want to keep it that way. So the the number six, the price guide says five and six were modern reprints, but the issue number five that I have is not a modern reprint. Um, but number six definitely is a modern reprint. In the series I'm talking about, it's called Vengeance Squad. Very cool little series. Um, uh, this is signed by Joe Staten because I'll show you why. Um, this issue um, has the backup feature, which is just awesome. The main story on this one, I think, is by Frank Bowl, but the rest of the series is done by Pam, um, Pete Morisi. Uh, but the backup feature, which is very cool, is Mike Mauser um, does the backup feature in this, and of course Nick Cuddy is writing it, and Joe Staten is doing the art chores. But it's very very cool. Um, I love Joe Staten's work. Uh, his stuff for Charlton, his stuff for Charlton, I just love it. Um, some of his panel breaks and his uh, perspective, I think, was is very cool. Um, that's a nice page right there. I love to own this page. Uh, I look for it once in a while, but um, Never come across. I'm sure it's not too obscure for it to be um, easy to be easy to be found. But um, the series is called Vengeance Squad. This is the first issue. Very high grade. Um, I just changed the bag on it because that bag was torn. Um, very nice shape. Um, really happy to have this in my collection. And the 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 storyline is this is this is team. Um, he was a treasury agent um, named Eric Red. He was framed for a crime he didn't commit, of course, sounds familiar, and he was put in prison, comes out, and he is now part of a security task force or a security team with the rest of his squad that um, takes care of problems and issues for the rich people. So they're kind of like security detail, kind of an A-team-esque type of, type of situation. Um, a, lot of, a lot of action in it. I enjoy it. Um, the covers are really cool. Um, this cover, um, I think it's a Frank Bull cover. He, I know he did the interiors, I'm pretty sure. Um, 
and number uh, number two, which um, has such a great cover on it. It's another high grade copy uh, of Vengeance Squad. Nice Pam artwork there. I love the corner box. I just like the series. Um, it's not relatively unknown. People really don't care about it. You find them in the quarter box or whatever. But if you find some high grade copies, score them because uh, they're hard to find. I mean, any Charlton because of the condition, the paper qualities, and everything else that, and the printing production. Charlton's are like I've said before, all my videos that I talk about a Charlton is they're not really, um, really not taken care of, and they're not because they're not sought after. They're just thrown in, in boxes and whatnot. So. Um, they're really hard to get a hold of. This is a really nice cover. Nice bold yellow. Um, a hand grenade coming at you. Pam did a really stellar job on, on this cover. Again, Pam, for you, her, for those who don't know, is Pete Marisi, um, who was a New York City police officer and moonlighted as a comic book artist. This is another cool cover. Um, Vigil Squad number four. Nice black cover and it's very, very high grade. Um, try to get the reflection and glare off of that. So again, it didn't last. It didn't last very long, but um, for me, it's memorable. I like the forty-five in the foreground. Very cool. I mean, this is a cool cover too. They're all really cool covers. I mean, Pam has a distinct style and. Um, Distinct page layout, as you can tell, but this cover really, um, really stands out for me. You get another high grade copy again of the black. It's just hard to find them in in nice shape. That is number five, and number six I don't have is a modern reprint. Um, it came out in '77, I believe. This one was dated. In 76, March of 76, so the other one came out a year later, so. The other short series I'm going to talk about that I don't have the full run. I've got the full magazine run. I don't have the full comic book color run, which is a $6 million man. Um, I got, this is the first issue, um, awesome painted cover by Joe Staten. Um, again, high-grade copy. Uh, awesome, big fan of the Six Million Dollar Man. Again, char again, it shows you the power of somehow, well, somehow, the power Charlton had as far as getting licenses. I mean, the Six Million Dollar Man was a big deal back when it was on TV. If you remember, as a kid, watched Six Six Million Dollar Man. I mean, there was a lot of merchandise out there, and Charlton had it. Um, they had the licensing to it, which says a lot about the company um, that people kind of forget about. I mean, they've had the Hanna Barbera stuff. They had um, the Six Million Dollar Man, Space 1999, the Bionic Woman Emergency, which if you don't know about that, it was about a team of firefighters um, and paramedics in the 70s. Um, they had license to, to that, both in a magazine format and uh, comic book format, same thing with the Space 1999, which I have the a nice full run of the magazine format, and they had the comic book format. So with John Byrne, early John Byrne work on that stuff. So here's another um, Six Million Dollar Man number two, um, with the awesome Neil Adams cover. I think this was used on one of the magazines. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was, but it's still a cool cover nonetheless. This cover um, says um, Castellano or Castiglione. I think it's from the uh, um, Neil Adams' is, uh, continuity studio out of that because it kind of looks like Adams and the kind of the production. I think it might have been out of the continuity studios that they were um, hiring out artists for Charlton and other publications. This is number three. This is a great cover, even though it's not one of the Adams or Staten cover, but it's a Jack Sparling cover, and it's really cool of him fighting an alligator. It's a great cover. This is number four. 
I think it's a great cover right there. I'm surprised they're not showing his bionics. Usually they've got uh, the scene on there where his arm or leg or something is cut open and you can see um, the bionics, but uh, this one you don't see it as much. And I like this cover, but you can tell it's coming to an end. Oh, I shouldn't say that because the covers are not as dynamic as the earlier issues. Um, this is number five. But he's just swatting his other guy, this guy with one handed with the motorcycle. Again, showing his strength of his bionic arm, but not showing any of the, any of the, uh, the uh, bionics or cybernetics or what have you that they usually show on the covers. Because the magazine covers, that's just, he's just ripped open. His legs are ripped open, his arms ripped open, so you can see, see what's going on. This is a cool cover. I think it's a Jack Sperling cover. Um. But it's it's pretty cool. Shows him in space, fixing a part of a space station. This is number six. The last issue that I have is number nine, and by Himes is the cover. Um, so it's very it's a, it's a it's a decent enough cover, but not like the earlier covers. This is the last issue. So we ran for nine issues. I don't know why I don't have the rest of them. I just need to hunker down and find them. Again, it's always finding stuff in decent enough shape that you want to put in your collection. So that is the quick Charlton uh, run. A couple quick quick rundowns of a two uh, pretty cool series to find if you can. Um, like I said, the Six Million Dollar Man. The licensing comics are really cool to have, particularly the magazines, because of course they're nice and big and you get a lot of bang for your buck, so to speak. But um, they're expensive. Um, you'll be paying probably about 20 to 40 bucks a pop for them um, if you find them in, in, in half decent shape. Um, they're, they're, they're sought after because really the, the, I think Adams did all the covers on the magazine series. So, but onward to something else that I picked up. Um, Back when I played video games, and I'm sure Metarog, if you're watching, you can uh, associate with this somewhat. Um, back when I played video games all the time, Resident Evil was one of my favorite franchise video games on the PlayStation. That, along with the um, the uh, Solid Snake franchise, um, all of those... Um, uh, those games, I just loved them. And anything I could find on Resident Evil, I love the, the theme, the format, the drama, everything involved with the characters and all this other stuff, particularly the monsters. Um, so a company called, um, called Mint Labs, I think that's the name of the company. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mint Labs. Um, Minted Labs, I'm sorry. Came out with this figure. Resident Evil, this is Nemesis. That he came first came out and I didn't think it was this big. He's huge. Um, nice production on the box, um, stuff on the back. Uh, Resident Evil. How you want? How you want to do it? Resident Evil there on the side. But it's called a soft statue, um, and I haven't taken him out of the box yet. So, uh, but again, Nemesis appeared in Resident Evil number three, the video game, where he would appear sporadically throughout the game and you'd have to first time for the Resident Evil franchise anyway where you would have to make decisions on what you're going to do in the game when Nemesis comes after you. Um, do you get away from him? Do you fight him? Or do you, do you, do you, or do you do something else? But he was very cool. And of course you have to confront him ultimately towards the end of the game. But this is a box he came in. Kind of like a shoe box. Um, it comes out very well. Um, but he's bolted in, so he looks uh, he looks pretty cool in there. Um, the lighting, I wish the lighting was a little bit better. I wish I take him out, out of the box. Um, he's clipped in. If you give me one second. He's clipped in with these twist ties. <laughs> I don't want to cut his costume.
There we go. There's one. There's two. Sorry, folks, I didn't think he was uh, in here as uh, tight as he is. But I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. Again, Metarog, if you're watching, you can appreciate it. I'm sure you played Resident Evil. I'm sure some of the viewers of my, subscribers of my channel, the viewers, have played Resident Evil. And I can understand the fascination with the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see, he's soft in the middle. <laughs> like, <laughs> like some of us, I guess. <laughs> but um, I guess that you can bend him. Yeah, you can pose him and bend him and stuff like that. Um, but it comes with that with the, with the bazooka. But the detail is really nice on him. It's a vinyl, uh, vinyl um, outfit. The bazooka is pretty cool. But I think his detail is pretty cool. But if you ever play the game, you understand the fascination with Nemesis, how cool he is. But that is from uh, Minted Labs, um, Nemesis. I didn't know he was so big. I have, I'm running out of real estate to where to put him. Um, but I'm sure I'll find a place. But again, the detail is pretty nice on this figure. You always going after the stars members. Stars. He'd go after them and he would chase you throughout the whole game. Thought they did a pretty good job. And uh, Minta Labs is a is a fledging toy company that has licensing um, for Resident Evil. Um, they're coming out with a liquor. And they got some plushes of Resident Evil, and they also have license to kiss stuff. So check them out um, again on the web, Minted Labs. Check them out. Um, you also get a you can put in certified um, that you have the your your figure, and you can register him at the Minted Labs uh, website. So he's pretty cool. Um, and then 18 minutes. So again, I thank everyone for viewing and subscribing. Thank you so much for the comments. Um, and next video, I'm going to do some shout outs. Um, there's some, a lot of new channels out there and again, older channels that still putting out awesome content and again, be part of the community and, uh, support each other, comment, um, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do. But if you give a thumbs down, even a thumbs up, but thumbs down, let me know why, um, you know, something you didn't like, something I can change. Um, but to me, you make a video, you always get a thumbs up from me. So um, you guys take care. Have a good rest of the weekend. And if I'm not back on here before the 4th, enjoy your 4th of July. You guys take care.